Let me take you back to the days before human rights. Before humans started to embrace the humanity of other humans. When everybody was thinking about themselves, their own family and friends, their own race. Forgetting that as humans we run the same race. We fight against the same stress and distress. And so you have the scars of massacres and genocides that line the interior of our history. Bloody wars and concrete walls of discrimination. Every nation on the planet has suffered the consequences of ignoring the dignity of humanity. Dark days, horrible history, I can't say much. But lest we forget where our freedom came from lest we continue to show the amnesia syndrome where we care about nothing but nothing. I'm here you to remind you. Remember, we were treated like animals and animals were treated like us. Back then, our dignity was stripped. Our humanity was ripped apart. We cried aloud to God, why? And he never seemed to answer. There are many stories, but this one, this one is the reason we are here. The date was 21st March 1960 at the police station in the South African township of Sherpville. Men, women and children just like you and me, tired of discrimination, tired of racism, tired of torture and tyranny. So they went to protest peacefully for rights that were inherently theirs, human rights. Without warning, without warning, the South African police opened fire on the crowd, killing 69 people and injuring 180 others, each bullet a sword, each round a violation of conscience, wounding the very essence of Ubuntu, but they never had it anyway, did they? Sad story, why, why, why we weep? But there's a cost to freedom. And now we remember these souls that stood for right, even though it didn't feel right. And because of their protest, the world became aware that they too were humans. One thing I did not mention is that most of them were youth. The older ones were there too, but they were there for their children. You had the Soweto uprising, youth like Hector Peterson and Mbuyisa Makubo, Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela did not stand for their rights when they were 90. They fought for freedom from their youth up. So the message to the youth is, please youth, youth up. The youth is the bridge between past and future, between slavery and freedom, between generations and generations. 60 years ago, decades ago, human rights were violated. Not because they were not known, but because they were ignored. For you see, the human rights aren't just the 30 articles in the Universal Declaration. Human rights is what it means to be human. So what makes you think that everybody will respect your rights? We have suffered so much to believe that humans will always deliver. So we need to know our rights for ourselves and fight for them every single day. We the youth have the potential to preserve human rights. Let's direct our fresh energies into educating ourselves about what are our rights. Because if every youth knows their right, right, and fights for it, no one can lead them otherwise.